big news and the best news to come out obviously uh, from the last 24 hours has been this announcement courtesy of one bj the bj king right if that's because that good nickname to give somebody probably not it says covid face mask rules and covid passes to end in england hallelujah hallelujah finally it feels like the uk has decided to basically live with covid it feels like we've made a collective decision even though i would say for the most part if you go out to places in shoreditch places in new cross you go to tottenham um you go to notting hill <laughs> right you wouldn't believe there was a pandemic in certain places certain hot spots you wouldn't believe a pandemic exists because people are out in force especially on, on a friday saturday night everyone's out everyone's getting on it everyone's getting giddy and whatever in the streets and whatnot and just having a blast so you wouldn't think there was a pandemic and it's been such a culture shock to go from being in berlin especially before they locked down and then coming back here or you know, leaving London to go to Berlin and come back here was a mind fuck because here we don't do anything. We only wear them when you have to wear the mask. And even on double jabbed in it, I just, you know, you just forget it or you don't take it with you. So the most times I've worn mine is basically when I've gone to do my like weekly shop. And even then I just forget to get it, especially if I'm going to the gym, I haven't brought it with me, but nowadays I just always leave one in my bag just in case. So that's the only time you wear it. So when I left London to go to Berlin, and then I'm going to the airport. Oh, wow, I got wearing. I got had, had, had to have it on the whole day. And I was really feeling constricted. I was like, oh, damn, I forgot what it felt like to wear a mask or the whole day, actually, because you had to have it on in the airport, on the on the airplane itself. And basically, you couldn't take it off until you got back outside, basically, the, the airport terminal in Berlin. And when you get onto the public transport there, you got to wear it too, everywhere you go, basically everywhere you go. Like, And you definitely get a lot of... um group pressure is it group societal pressure because everybody on the public transport is wearing one and you kind of like have to put one on so you kind of even if you forget you quickly put it on because everyone else is having it on then to do that and then come back here to the uk was a mindful because everyone's looking at you like a freak when you're when you're at the station waiting for your overground and you've only one got the mask on so it's been a bit of a weird one but in general some would argue as dsp says <laughs> that we've been living without covid anywhere for the best part of what maybe it feels like three months or something more than that the only place where you feel it again is maybe when you go out to a club you have to do the whole flipping pcr thing some places which is weird some places don't even let you in some places aren't even asking for covid passes which is interesting they just favor more pcr tests most promoters it feels like if they're able to have because i think he mentions it in this article um places will be able to choose um what entry requirement they would basically need for you to you know um enter their premises and some people that i've seen for the most part some most places i've gone to they've prioritized pcr tests over vaccine passports which is interesting interesting but yeah we continue um face mask rules and covid passes to end in england it says here um england's plan b measures which is what we have at the moment which basically means you have to wear your mask in stores and whatnot sorry uh, are set to end from next thursday with mandatory face coverings in public places and covid passports to both be dropped the prime minister has also said the government would immediately drop its advice for people to work from home the pm said that england was reverting to plan a due to boosters and how people had followed plan b measures and if you want to hear his, his announcement because he was really happy about how he was really happy about announcing this by the way so let's just hear what he had to say in real time this morning the cabinet concluded that because of the extraordinary booster campaign together with the way the public have responded to the Plan B measures, we can return to Plan A in England and allow Plan B regulations to expire. Yeah. As a result, from the start of Thursday next week, mandatory certification will end. Yeah. Organisations can, of course, choose to use the NHS COVID pass voluntarily, but we will end the compulsory use of COVID status certification in England. Yeah. From now on, the government is no longer asking people to work from home. Yeah. And people should now speak to their employers about arrangements for returning to the office. And having looked at the data carefully, the Cabinet concluded that once regulations lapse, the government will no longer mandate the wearing of face masks anywhere. Yeah. Mr Speaker. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, from from tomorrow, from tomorrow we will no longer require face masks in classrooms, and the department and the Department for Education will shortly remove national guidance on their use in communal 
areas. Amazing, isn't it? Amazing, amazing, amazing. Over the moon, um, cannot wait. The, 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 the Prime Minister said, yeah, the mandatory passport centre in nightclubs and large events would end. The organisations could choose to use NHS COVID pass if they wished. Like I said, most places I've been to have only required you to take PCR tests, which has been somewhat well received, I think, because a lot of people that live within, or a lot of people that kind of exist within the dance, com the, the, you know, the dance music scene or the nightlife scene, tend to prefer PCR test over COVID vac over vaccines and passports because of whatever political opinion they have. So that's good to see. People will no longer be advised to work from home and should discuss their return to office with the employers. pret a is doing flipping backflips right now. So is Greg's and all these places that basically don't exist or don't function as businesses unless people are able to go back and through, back and forth to work, especially places like Liverpool Street, you know, all those offices around that area, um, Silicon Roundabout, quote unquote, the old street area. All those places are going to be over the moon the cafes and whatnot um having people basically go back to your office because without them those places do not function the contingency of face masks will no longer be mandated though people are still advised to wear them in enclosed crowds palaces and when meeting strangers no one's going to wear them it british people are like that if you give us the if you if you if you tell us we don't need to do something and then advise us we can do it if we want we're not going to do it <laughs> from thursday especially if it's not, it's not illegal from thursday secondary school people who no longer wear, need to wear face masks in classrooms and government guidance for the usual community areas will be removed shortly i never understood the whole kid thing man from early on right when the when covid was at its it's the most severe and people were dropping dead left right and center we were told from the beginning to kind of not say factual things but two things that were super super kind of drummed into us was that hey number one kids can't get it as severely as adults can um obviously they're still they're still highly what's that word called they can still transmit it to other people but they can't you know it doesn't affect them it's not as fucking lethal as it may be with adults especially people that have pre-existing health conditions and number two you don't need to wear a face mask outdoors right your you, is the chance of you catching the virus outdoors are you know for, for, are reduced a lot and for whatever reason you know roll on the whatever recent years we've kind of turned it into kids need to get vaxxed as well and now we've kind of had kids flipping wearing face masks in classrooms and having their tables you know distance apart it's just nonsense like that whole that whole kind of um that whole kind of uh make-believe thing that we did that somehow these things were actually helping us was nonsense because for the most part we were just all lucky i think still face masks obviously have some benefit for sure but let's say prolonged you know, if you're if you're staying in the flipping supermarket for an hour and a half and people have COVID around you, you're probably going to get it anyway. But if you're quick and you're sensible about where you are and you don't loiter around and stuff and you've got a face mask on, I'm sure that's going to, you know, reduce your chances of getting the virus. But this idea that standing two meters apart and having some perspex glass in front of you was ever going to protect you is just nonsense, especially, you know, as if like the virus can't go above the flipping thing that you're in. It's just weird. But, you know, whatever, man, I'm happy anyway. I'm over the moon. So hopefully that's going to happen very soon. But if you're wondering, if you're wondering why Boris was so quick to come out and basically announce this and why he was so jubilant and why some of the people in his backbench were also wanting to be jubilant with him and kind of give him some, you know, imaginary high fives, it's because of this. Obviously, he's still in a bit of a hot seat, right, at the moment, Boris, for the flipping party that happened <laughs> under his watch. And he got grilled really aggressively here by, um, what's her name, Beth Rigsby or Beth Grisby, whatever that woman's name is from Sky's News, who is funny with her, too, because I think last year she was caught alongside with, um, what's her name, that absolute B-I-T-C-H something kelly whatever her name is that woman right and they went out for a party again last year was so weird man when it came to people breaking covid rules like people's birthday parties turned into real like make or break things like people just couldn't resist i don't know what it is about people's birthday parties like i need to celebrate my birthday and this woman's like 67 years old like why do you care about your birthday that it, your birthday should not matter anymore when you're over the age of 18 i swear to god over the age of 18 no one cares about your birthday like don't invite me out don't say it's a restaurant place i don't i don't care i'll send you a text i'll let you know you know especially if i'm close to you i might even get you a gift on amazon gift card but a birthday party when you're when you're over the age of 18 is one of the most r-worded things i've ever seen in my entire life it's so immature and childish and for some reason during the height of lockdown people said people's birthdays was like the breaking point like i can't take it anymore i need to be outside for my birthday me, me, me. and then they go out and break the rules and then get caught and then start crying about it again like nonsense but anyway that aside i thought she grilled boris really really well and he was you know obviously being 
um, the excellent orator that he is and stumbling all over his words and he came out with some absolute doozy so if you're wondering why Boris was so quick to announce that we're going to end the we're wearing a face mask and we go back to plan A all this rousing speech he does because obviously his job is in the underline too and for whatever reason politicians don't you know are immune to flipping consequences so he had this party during the height of lockdown he was obviously there enjoying himself with a glass of pims and some cheese they bought from flipping waitrose um him and his new missus hanging out having a good time and you know he didn't want to fall any sword he didn't want to resign obviously still now he's still hanging on to his job like a last dsp said like a cat hanging on to a curtain like for dear life and yeah, he, he's fighting as much as he can, but this interview was absolutely legendary. This is Sky News interviewing Boris Johnson and asking him, is he going to step down over the party's controversy? And here's his answer. Just to be clear then, you're saying that Dominic Cummins is lying and his version of events is not true. What I'm, what I'm, I just repeat, I, I, I'm deeply sorry for mistakes I know, that were but made. Are you but saying that he's lying and his version of events, it's very important. Viewers will want to know the public will want to know, me, MPs will want to of know. Course, of course. He is on the record saying under oath, you are lying, that you were warned about this event and you went ahead <laughs> anyway, that you knew that I can it tell was, you it was dodgy. Categorically, that nobody told me and nobody, nobody said that uh, this was something that was against the rules, that was... A Yo, that line is so mad. Nobody told me this was against the rules. Mate, you make the rules. You're the leader. You're the boss. Nobody told me I couldn't do this. Like, you know what this kind of reminds you of a little bit? This is a weird example to make, but it's something that always kind of grated me. A tiny bit, tiny bit grated me. It's, again, it's just me, just me. Whenever you'd go for an interview to a, a, like a new place that you went to go and work at, and you'd get there, and let's say your interview was at 3 p.m., you rock up at let's say 2.45, you know, 2.50 if you're going to be cheeky. But you wake up at enough time for, for to get to the reception, you know, um, say you're there, let the receptionist then, you know, send a message to whoever needs to be. But you're there with enough time to start your interview on time. And for whatever reason, it never does. It always starts like five minutes later. Or maybe sometimes I've, I've been waiting in the reception for like 15 minutes. But because of that time, you're usually unemployed or you're trying to leave a place that is, you know, you're absolutely hating. You don't notice the time. But it's a little tiny thing that usually I find a little bit disrespectful. Right? That Like, I, I know I don't work for you guys, but at least respect my time. You said 3 p.m. I'm here at 3 p.m. And the funny thing is, if the shoe was on the other foot, if no, yeah, or if it was the other way around and you turned up 15 minutes late, they probably won't let you in the building or your chances of getting a job will decrease heavily. And then the same thing needs to be said again. No, and then another example, you know, when you're at work and you, you know, you come in at nine and then for every reason, your boss just always comes in at 9.25, 9.30, 9.40, sometimes 10 a.m. for no reason. And they always leave on time too. It's not like they stay late. They always leave on time. That's always the thing that's kind of grating me a little bit. And usually is a sign of poor leadership. And usually in the places I've been where that kind of happens, it's not been the greatest place to work. And people are kind of working, you know, begrudgingly. The kind of people that work at those kind of places are the ones that complain about their bosses all night long when you go out for a couple of drinks. That's always a bad sign too. If you go out for drinks and you spend your entire time complaining about the place you work at, you probably work in a toxic environment and you probably should think about leaving. Unless you can't leave and you've got a family and you've got to, you know, put food on the table. It is what it is. But most places I've found, if you're complaining about it the whole time when you're with your work colleagues meant to have, you know, downtime and relax, it's not a good sign. But him saying I didn't know I wasn't allowed when he's the guy making the rules is absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. A breach of the, of the COVID rules, that we were doing something that wasn't a, a work event because, uh, frankly, I don't think, uh, I can't imagine why on earth it would have gone ahead or why it would have been allowed uh, to go ahead. I, my, my memory of this event, as I said, That's... is going... That's how you know he's a prick. Because he's throwing other people under the bus when he's meant to be the leader. When you're the leader, you're meant to lead first. It's like, what's that quote? What's that book title? Great leaders eat last, right? I'm sure it's a phrase, right? I'm sure it's a saying, but it's, it's true. Great leaders eat last and you're meant to, it's like, um, it's like being the captain on a boat, right? It, when it's going down, you're meant to stay on board and be the last one to leave. Make sure everyone else gets off first and you're meant to go down with the ship or be the last one to leave. But this guy's basically saying, I didn't know. I didn't know. I couldn't get on the one of the first boats to leave. I didn't know. I just got on there because it was there. It's like, brother. Going out into the garden for about 25 minutes for what I implicitly thought was a, uh, a work event. 
uh, this and guy, talking man. to staff, thanking staff. Um, I, I, I can't remember exactly how many, but for about 25 minutes I was there. I then went back to my, uh, my office and continued my work. Um, you know, I, I do humbly apologize to people for uh, misjudgments that were made, but that is the, the very, very best of my recollection about this event. That's what I've, uh, I've said to, to the inquiry. We'll have to see what they, what they say. Some of your MPs that, and, and members of the public think that this is your Barnard Castle moment, that the idea that you walked into the garden there's 40 people there, the tables are laid out with food and drink and there's alcohol yeah. being served in the middle of a lockdown and you think that's a work event. That is just ludicrous, isn't it? You are just taking the mickey out of the British people by no, suggesting I, well, I, 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 look, I, I, You know how silly that sounds, don't you? I think what people... Imagine rocking up to a missus or your fella or whoever you're with and saying, yeah, I didn't know I was walking into a brothel. I didn't know I was walking into an orgy. I just thought it was a work event. Imagine, imagine trying to get that lie off. You have to be, obviously, you have to be somebody that's, um, I don't know if people even rich even make those lies. Because what's the point? I guess if you're rich, you won't give a shit. There's just certain lies that there's not even worth even saying because it just sounds so far-fetched. But I guess when you're, when you're that, like, when you're that kind of d divorced from consequences, because imagine when this Boris actually had to face any consequences in his life for his actions. Like, he's the kind of type of person, like, you know, in um, the episode of, sort of Succession, when that guy accidentally kills that boy when he's going to go try and score drugs and he drowns in a car. He's, that just sorted it out for him, right? Th things like that can just disappear because you've got money or the consequences aren't as harsh. You might get community service. You might get a slap on the wrist, a little fine. And again, so he's, he's just... He, I don't even think he's being dishonest. I generally think he doesn't think he did anything wrong. That's the scary part of it. People need to do is wait and see what the the report says, but I, I repeat my, my deep apologies to people for mistakes that uh, may have been mistakes. made on my watch. And, but you see that that looks ridiculous. I, I, it sounds I, ridiculous. I, I, I repeat my apologies for any and all misjudgments that were made. Two boozy parties held in the garden in the buildings of Number 10 the night before Prince Philip's funeral when the country was in national mourning <laughs> was having to apologise to the Queen about those parties the night before she put her husband of over 70 years, she laid him to <laughs> rest. Was that a moment of shame for you? I, I, I deeply and, and bitterly regret uh, that, 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 that that happened and I can only uh, you know, and renew my apologies both to, uh, to Her Majesty and uh, to the country. Ah, oh, fuck that. A little tiny thing, again, it's not a big deal, but come on, man. Like, this guy's a mess. He can't even put on a face mask properly. Like, it's going over one of his earlobes. Like, pfft. sometimes it makes you question your ambition in life, innit? Or question your career choices. Because you look at these people and you're like, honestly, legitimately, like, if you weren't born where you were born and you weren't born into the family you were born into, the time that you were born, like, could he ever get this job if you were just a regular dude? Impossible, right? Impossible, impossible, impossible. Like, forget the dumb dumbness, just the lack of, like, he doesn't inspire any confidence. What kind of leader is he? Like, again, the, it's one thing he did a mistake. Of course, you know, you're in the garden, you do the whole party thing, cool. I think most people broke the rules in some way, shape or form, but it's the way that they tried to like scare everybody not to go outside they were finding people i remember seeing videos of them dragging g manos out of their gyms and arresting them and giving them fines and stuff for having gyms open to keep people fit and healthy and these guys were sat around you know in their flipping suits that are exploding you know their moss bro suits eating flipping mns flipping cheese boards and shit and drinking what um what do you call it alco pops and rosé, because you know he's a rosé drinker, isn't it? You know he drinks rosé or chardonnay or something, or some nonsense. You know, having a couple of grapes, talking about whatever he saw on TV. Whilst we were the ones that were kind of on punishment, so-and-so, looking over our shoulders, making sure they weren't police around the corner. <sighs> Hate them, man. Hate them.